Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is a great day uh, for the Denver Broncos and our fans, and we are excited to welcome Nathaniel Hackett as the head coach of the Denver Broncos. And uh, I'd like to welcome Nathaniel's family uh, to Broncos country, uh, his wife, Megan, uh, his two sons, Harrison and London, his two daughters, Briar and Everly. And we just uh, really thank you for joining us on this special day. And I know it's uh, been a stressful couple of weeks, and, and uh, you know, I just know you're all going to love being a part of this out, you know, amazing uh, Denver uh, community. You know, we started this search uh, 19 days ago, and we set out to find a, an outstanding leader, a brilliant coach, um, and someone who could lead our entire organization uh, together. And we went into it with an open mind and uh, met in person with 10 really impressive uh, candidates across eight different cities, all in 11 days. And uh, we thoroughly enjoyed learning about these candidates and their vision uh, for our football team. And, and for that, you know, I want to thank each and every one of them, uh, starting uh, with Eric Bieniemy, uh, Brian Callahan, Jonathan Gannon, Luke Getze, Aaron Glenn, Gerard Mayo, Kellen Moore, Kevin O'Connell, and Dan Quinn. And, and um, you know, the league is certainly in good hands with the outstanding, with the outstanding coaches, and I truly appreciate the time uh, they spent with our organization. You know, from the start of the interview process, uh, Nathaniel impressed us with his intelligence, uh, his innovation, and his strong uh, leadership qualities. You know, we met with Nathaniel. The, the initial interview was in Green Bay. He blew us away. You know, it was four and a half hours uh, about everything. And when he walks into the room, he lights it up. Uh, we followed that up with a second interview. We brought him to, uh, to Denver on Monday and visited for, you know, nine to ten hours. Um, and then I followed that up the next day with a one-on-one -on -one, uh, Zoom session with Nathaniel for probably two and a half hours. So. I think he's probably sick of talking to me. I, uh, he's sick of the process. Um, but um, at least he got to have a, a great meal at uh, Los Dos Patrios, which, uh, you know, really kind of sealed uh, uh, the deal. Um, you know, from the start, uh, um, you know, the more we talked with Nathaniel, you know, the more we realized uh, he was the right leader for the Denver Broncos and really the perfect uh, uh, choice uh, to reboot this organization. Um, as you'll see here in a few moments, his enthusiasm is infectious. Uh, his knowledge of the game is really remarkable. Um, you know, this guy, he's going to bring a lot of juice. He's going to bring a lot of energy uh, to our building. Um, you know, when we did a lot of background, we do a lot of background on all the candidates, and, and uh, the word that kind of resonated other than his football acumen uh, was connection. And uh, Nathaniel has a unique ability to connect with everyone he touches. Um, he has a proven track record of developing younger players, you know, working with quarterbacks and helping great players become even better. Um, but it was his vision in all three phases of our football team that really separated himself uh, with the rest of the group. Um, he's the son of a very successful college, an NFL coach. Uh, he grew up around football. He's all about ball. He's a student of the game. Uh, he's a unique competitor who's all about winning. Um, but uh, he, he's different than, than any coach you know, I've really been around. Um, he has a lot of other interests. He's all about family. Any communication you have with Nathaniel, it's about his family. It was very refreshing. Uh, he's about cultivating relationships. You know, he's big into the arts, uh, helping others, volunteering uh, in the community, which is why I think he com connects with so many different types of people. Uh, he has two decades of experience coaching. Uh, including serving as an offensive coordinator for three different teams and uh, most recently with the Packers and, and all the success they had. Obviously, they were number one seed this year. Uh, they've led the league in wins the past three years and obviously have been very dynamic on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, before I turn it over to Nathaniel, you know, I just wanted to thank our small and diverse uh, search committee, <clears throat> and that's uh, Darren Muji, uh, Kelly Klein, Rich Hurtado, Ray Jackson and Patrick Smythe. I thought it was really important to bring the entire community or the entire committee to these interviews just so all the candidates got a taste of what we're all about in this organization and it shined, it shined bright. It was a collaborative and thorough process and I really appreciated the different perspectives uh, that the group shared uh, during this process. Uh, I also want to thank our football operations department led by Chip Conway 
uh, and Adam Newman. You know, when you're on the road, uh, you know, you're doing 10 interviews, 11 days, eight different cities. It's a logistical nightmare, and it was as smooth as it could possibly be. Uh, we couldn't have done it without Joe Ellis and all the resources he gave us, you know, with the plane, the hotels we stayed at, conference rooms, you know, all the meals we had with the prospective uh, uh, candidates. You know, I also want to thank John Elway uh, for being a sounding board for me uh, throughout this uh, process. Um, I want to thank Richmond Flowers, uh, Nathaniel's agent, who is here today. I'm not sure where. Uh, first class, uh, the whole way, and uh, that's the reason why he's here, and I really appreciate you, uh, Richmond. I also want to thank the Green Bay Packers, a first class uh, organization led by Mark uh, Murphy, Brian Kudekist, and Matt LaFleur, who really accommodated us, accommodated us throughout this entire process. I just want to thank them. And with that, it's my pleasure to introduce the 18th head coach in Denver Broncos history, Nathaniel Hackett. Woo. How's everybody doing today? There you go. Um, look, I feel like this is a dream right now. I mean, this is absolutely unbelievable to be up here in front of everybody here. Um, it's like crazy. My kids just trying to got to keep my composure about me because this is this is truly unbelievable. Um, I, to say that I'm excited would be a massive understatement because I am. I'm so excited to get to work, and I want to do nothing but uh, work with all these guys and be with them. But, you know, there's so many thank yous to give for the person that you see standing up here right now. I mean, you look at my, my wife. <laughs> love you. Um, Harrison, Breyer, Everly, London. <laughs> I love you guys. Um, Richmond, I appreciate you so much, man. You've been awesome. Um, my mom and dad. I mean, you got to look at uh, my dad's a football coach, and being a football coach, coach's kid, um, it's, it's not cool sometimes. And, uh, you know, be able to stick together and be a family and, and everything that he's done for me to show me how to be a dad, how to be a husband, um, I, I could never thank him enough, let alone all the football stuff. You know, I think it's just he's been so integral in my life, you know, and, and, my, and my mom, I mean, both of them, for all the things that we've done, my brother, um, you know, we've, it's a crazy profession, and we all know that. But when you've got a strong family, and it's, beautiful things can happen. Um, and then all the different stops that I've been. I mean, you sit here and you stand in front of everybody, and, and it's, you know, Nathaniel Hackett's name is up here. But hey, it took everybody to get me in this position right here. Uh, I mean, it really did. I mean, just from the starting point of George, I mean, he's been absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I'm so grateful for all the conversations we've had. And yes, they were very extensive and long with everybody. His whole team was absolutely unbelievable. Um, Joe Ellis, I mean, awesome. I mean, John Elway, I really want that jersey, please. I'm not joking. Um, but, uh, you know, just this whole organization has been unbelievable. And then my journey to, where, to the man that you see today. I mean, from UC Davis, Mark, Mark Johnson, Fred Arp, <laughs> dang. Aggie pride, y'all. You know, that's, it's, it, it was a great time being there. To my experience at Stanford where I got to meet my wife, you know, you look at going to Tampa, being with Richard Mann, one of the best ever, Joey Galloway, those guys that mean so much to me, Ike Hilliard, you know, the players, because it's about the players, y'all, and it's like, that's what makes these things special, and all the people that have, been affect, have affected me as, as made me the man that I am. I mean, you go all the way to... Buffalo with Alex Van Pelt, Fred Jackson, E. Wood, Robert Woods, Lee Smith, so many guys that mean so much to me. Uh, you look at the experience at Syracuse when Doug Marone gives this quality control guy a chance to be a coordinator. I mean, who would have thought? And uh, we were able to get to Syracuse and do some great things with Alec Lemon, Ryan Nassib, Justin Pugh, just these guys that are just great people. And then you are all of a sudden back at Buffalo, going to Jacksonville. I mean, that 2017 season was unbelievable. And it was about those guys working together and believing in each other. And I thought that was one of the most beautiful things I'd ever seen, you know, especially when nobody expects you to do anything and then you rally together as one and as a group and are able to do something special. That the fact that I got to be part of that and be there with those guys and watch them execute and be, be who they are, I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. I mean, that experience there. And then you go to the Green Bay Packers. I mean, I'm telling you, the Green Bay Packers, that, what a great organization, amazing place to be, amazing people. I mean, the people I got to work with, Matt LaFleur, I mean, I will thank him forever. 
I'm going to make a run uh, at being the sexiest coach in the, in the NFL against him. Um, but, uh, I mean, the things that he taught me, the things that he allowed me to do, the person he let me be, and the staff that we got to hire. And I realized how important a great staff is because a great staff and the group that you're going to be with, I mean, it's the foundation, the people you work with every day, like George. I mean, it's, I mean that's what this whole thing's about, the, the, everybody, the PR people, anybody that's here, all you guys, because it takes all of us to, to make a great organization. And, and, and the, that's what the Green Bay Packers were, and that's what we're going to do here. I mean, all those people there. I mean, Goody, how amazing he was. The players, I mean, those guys. I mean, heck, it was, it was hard walking out of that building um, just those past couple days. I mean, because there's a lot of love there. And, and there's a lot of work that you put in to be able to gain those relationships. And, and I mean, I'm so grateful for the Packers, so grateful for Matt LaFleur, so grateful for all the men that I worked with. I mean, they're, they're just the, the best people ever, that, the, everybody there. And, and like I said, the players. But, you know, again, when I keep mentioning the players. And, you know, for me, that's what this game is about. You know, growing up in a locker room with my father um, and all those guys, coaching, it's about the relationships. It's about watching those guys out there excel and showing something special and making Broncos country proud. And that's what we want to do. And that's what I'm going to bring to the table. I want to create this environment where people want to come into this building and work and have fun doing it. But let's, let's make no mistake, it's only fun when you win football games. So we got to win, and that's what we want to do. I'm so excited to work with this organization, with these players, meeting with each one of them, getting to know them. I mean, this is a young, hungry football team. And, and, and we got to get over the hump. We got to be excited about it. And we all have to do this. I'm excited to meet every one of you guys uh, all around, all, uh, every person here, every man, woman, everybody, and just get to know every one of you guys. Because that's what this is about. It's about people, it's about communication, it's about talking with one another. And, and it's about all of us coming together and, and making something special here and, uh, and really making Broncos country proud. Because that's what it's all about. It's, we got to win some games. Uh, so before I get even more emotional and overexcited, uh, I'm going to open it up for, uh, for questions. Guys, we'll start with questions just for Coach Hackett alone at the podium. After that, I'll take a seat. We'll open it up for questions for George as well. Any additional ones for Coach? And as Coach Hackett gets to know everyone, please state your name and affiliation as you're asking the questions. Starting with Ryan. Hey, Ryan O'Heller at Denver Post. How you doing, Ryan? It's good. great to see you again, good. man. You too. Um, two parts. Uh, flying home Monday night, how confident were you that they were going to offer you the job this week. And just as a follow-up, will you call the plays on offense? OK, first question uh, is about the, the job. I, you know, I mean, I think in the end, um, you know, I felt great. I think you know, I felt how great they felt. I mean, because again, it's about the communication. I thought we had great communication throughout the whole process. And I think that's what you're looking for, that trust and, and communication. And um, I didn't know. I mean, you never know. Uh, I mean, and, and that's in the back of your head as a coach and how all this stuff works. You never know 100%. Um, and then once you get that opportunity and you hear it, that's when you know it's real. I mean, it's all about what you say and how you do it. And um, they did a great job. The process was really incredible uh, because I'm lucky enough to be standing up here <laughs> right now. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's when uh, – so I guess I really didn't know until they, they gave it to, to me. So. And then the following question was calling the plays. Yes, I will be calling the plays. Yes. Well, you know, I'm so lucky, again, going back to the Green Bay Packers and Matt LaFleur. I mean, Matt LaFleur came in as a first-time head coach, and um, I was able to watch him maneuver that from being a, both a head football coach and calling plays. And, and I think it's about being able to budget your time, understand what you need to get done so that you have the ability to be great on game day, because in the end, that's the most important thing. So I think for me, it's just going about being able to budget all my time, being efficient. That's something that I pride myself in, is not wasting a lot of time. Uh, making sure uh, everybody's prepared and ready. And, and to be able to do that is having that great staff. You have that great staff, and you're, you're capable of doing anything. So uh, I'm very excited to get back to doing that. Hey, Coach uh, Eric Delala, DenverBroncos.com. How are you doing? What's your initial evaluation of this roster, and, and how close is this team, do you think, to being able to compete for division title, Super Bowl titles? Yeah, I'll tell you, uh, you know, right out of the gate, I know it's a very young, hungry team. Um, but, uh, you know, I've been here for such a short period of time. I've been in the NFC, so I haven't gotten to see too much. But uh, I'm really sit, uh, excited to sit down with George, and, and we're going to look through the whole thing. And we're going we're gonna to go through every single player, talk about them, find out about the person they are, and, uh, and we'll find out more. Coach Hackett, Troy Rank from Denver 7. How are we doing? Doing fantastic. When you took this job, 
what, and they talked about you had this complimentary vision of how to play complimentary football. What kind of was that vision, because they've struggled in special teams and offensively, and how offensively, what, how would you describe your, your scheme to Broncos country, which is, that has been really the issue the last six years, they just not scoring enough points. Okay, uh, the first question, um, first question once again, let me uh, make sure I just got the one for, for the Packers, the first one. The, your vision for complimentary football, so, and then the second is about the offense, your, gotcha. your scheme on the offense. Okay, uh, so complimentary football, I think, you know, I've been very lucky in my career because I played middle linebacker. I'm not going to say it was very good, but I did get to play middle linebacker, and I was also a long snapper and a short snapper. Um, so I, that was kind of where my, the start was. Heck, I, I started coaching linebackers. That was one of my first jobs that I, uh, that I got for a couple days, and then uh, ended up doing, uh, going back to Stanford. But um, I coached special teams. I coached defense. I coached offense. And now here I am as an offensive coach in front of you all. And um, I think it's about understanding those intricacies, understanding what a special teams coach really goes through, what a defensive coach goes through. And when it comes to complimentary football, it's about understanding what everybody's going through. And I think that's, that's when we talk about that, is understanding that, hey, offense, in my opinion, it controls the tempo of the game. It controls how aggressive you are, how you ball control, whether you want to take shots, whether you want to run the ball. Um, so I think it's about being able to maneuver that to be able to protect anybody else on the field, because it's about the team. The whole thing's about the team. Whatever we can do to take advantage of the players, that what they do the best, and be able to execute and win the game as a team. So it might not be a lot of offense, it might be more defense, but we have to just work together and understand how those things all link. And I think that's just something that, from my background, understanding all those different worlds, it's really helped me over time. And then from a standpoint of how the offense is, um, you know, I think first and foremost, any offense that you have, it has to be maneuverable and, and it has to be adjustable for whoever you have on your team. Because it's about finding out what your guys do the best and being able to do that over and over again and taking advantage of their skill sets. So you want to have enough that you can do so many different things and adjust because, I mean, heck, there's injuries. There's nothing you can do about that in football. That, that's just how it is. Um, and so you have to be able to, like I said, maneuver that. But I think the starting point is outside zone. Outside zone on offense is what you want to do, and you want to base that off a of play pass. You want to make the defense cover the entire field. And you want to take shots down the field. I mean, let's all face it, that's what the people in the stands love. They love those bombs down the field. I remember watching John Elway throw the ball down, down the field to McCaffrey on all those boot fakes. I mean, that was unbelievable. I mean, this is really where this system kind of evolved from and was created. And I, so you're always looking for that. And then mixing in that West Coast principle of the drop back game. So that's how we'll kind of go about it. That's kind of a quick summary. So many fun things to talk about with the offense. Hey, Nathaniel, uh, George Stoya with the Hi, Denver, George. Hi. Denver and Colorado Springs Gazette. Uh, I wanted to ask you about your dad. We all know his history. What was that experience like <laughs> growing up and how much of an influence has he had on you as a coach? Whew, I'll tell you, my, my dad is one of the, like I said earlier, he's one of the best men I've ever met. Um, you know, like I said, growing up as a coach's kid, you're, you see a lot of stuff, and he'll tell a lot of people, he, he's like, I'm sorry that I put him in the locker room, and he'll apologize every now and then. Um, but it was amazing. I mean, I loved, you know, my dad and, and what he was doing. I loved his work ethic. I mean, it was always great. When dad came home, it was, it was about being with dad. And, uh, you know, he's the best. And, um, just seeing the ups and downs of this profession, I think, uh, was something that was very valuable for me, um, for my kids, and for us to stay strong and be together with my wife and my kids. Is you know, he taught me like, hey, there, there's going to be adversity, and just like we talk about about adversity with the team and how we triumph over that, you have to do that with your own family, and uh, you know, almost like the the, the training started super early, um, when there was some crazy adversity stuff uh, throughout his career. Um, but he's definitely affected me as a coach. I remember I brought him in at, uh, when I was at Buffalo, and I brought him in and I uh, he asked him to just watch me and, and, and just critique me and tell me how I can be better and how I can be a better coach, um, just from a developmental standpoint. And um, it was a good idea at first, and then it got really bad when he came to dinner with like 20 pages of notes. and. I was feeling really good about my coaching style until he, uh, until he started giving me all the advice, but it was one of the best things that's ever happened to me. I mean, it changed a lot of the things that I did. I mean, he was in everything from how I presented, uh, meetings, on the field. I mean, it, it was a great, it was great. And, and I think that's also why you know, I want to do things here um, to be able to help coaches get that, to be able to, how can they develop and how can they learn how to teach better? So, you know, he's done so much for me. Nathaniel, Jeff Legwell. Uh, Hi, Jeff. ESPN. I, I'm curious, did you and George discuss a plan at the quarterback position, and do you anticipate bringing any Packer assistance with you? 
Uh, I think right now, you know, just getting here on this day, I think there's so many things that we're going to talk about. I think we've discussed all kinds of different things, and uh, I think now that this whole thing is official, and I'm so excited to sit down and go through it all from uh, the entire staff, uh, from everything. So uh, those are all the end, the quarterback position, all that stuff. We're going to sit down. I mean, George is a great guy to talk to, and I imagine we'll, we'll talk for a long time about everything. Uh, again, we're going to work through all that stuff, and, and they're, they're all package assistant, and there's a whole process we have to go through, and it's great actually learning about the process through how they've done everything they did with me, and it's great how we have those processes, and we'll, we'll get through all those. Nathaniel, Andrew Mason, DPR. Hi, Andrew. Good to meet you. A couple of things. First of all, what role is analytics going to play in your day-to-day -day coaching <clears throat> on game day, et cetera? So analytics, uh, you know, I, I think they're awesome. I think that numbers are an amazing thing in this world. Um, I've been uh, very enamored by so many things from when I first started as a quality control. I mean, I was a quality control guy for eight years, and the amount of stuff that we built from reports uh, across the board uh, were awesome. And I think what they do for, especially as a play caller, and um, and anybody that utilizes them is they're a great baseline. They're great things to show you and help guide you and check what you do. They're a great way to check what you're doing yourself. So I think there's so many different ways that you can utilize them. When you look at game day, I mean, there's so many things that can help guide you to make the best decision because, you know, for anybody that's out on that field, every decision, it's, it's very quick. And I think that the more that you have the analytical data to help you make a better decision, um, it, it's going to help the whole team. And so I think that we'll use that quite a bit. And it's not necessarily going to be the, you know, the only thing we're going to do, and it's going to be exactly what we're going to do, but we're definitely going to use, utilize it to help us make great decisions. And second, you're a Star Wars enthusiast. Which character sums up your personality best and why? Oh, gosh, I would, did not know I was going to get that one right now. Um, I have always felt myself that I feel like I'm a Han Solo. Um, I just felt like he was always smooth and cool and... He got the beautiful princess, too, so sorry, I had to say that. Um, but uh, she's so mad at me right now. Um, but no, I, I, I've always loved Han, and I mean, God, Yoda, there's, that's almost like picking one of my children. I mean, I, Star Wars is dear to me, so, but no, hey, we'll throw Han out there. Han. Nathaniel, Nick Cosmutter of The Athletic. Hi, Nick. Hi. Um, you, you just mentioned eight years as a quality control assistant. Um, you know, it's kind of a long road before you got your first offensive coordinator job. Um, you, you had a lot of prior interests, a lot of things you were good at. Was there ever any point where you wondered um, whether you would get to, to the place where you are today and, and what kind of kept you going at that point? Yeah, I mean, eight years, you know, I, there's so much respect and a lot of people say, what do quality control guys do? And uh, it's everything. <laughs> I mean, they, they do everything. I mean, they're the ones behind the scenes that are crunching the numbers, grinding, you know, probably longer than anybody. And um, so much respect for that position. I always tell coaches, I, you know, I, I did it for so long, I would never ask them to do anything that I wouldn't do myself or haven't done. And um, I, I think that during that process, when you're in that position for so long, I mean, it's grueling, it's hard, and you get to find out how much you really love this game and, and how much you're willing to put in. And it gives you a confidence that is unwavering because you know if you can grind like that, do the things and, and try to find unique ways to make things um, more efficient and, and uh, I think it just, it really tests you. And I think I'm glad that I went through all those tests. And I'm glad that I did it for as long as I did and was very lucky to get that opportunity. But I think, you know, you always have ups and downs like any career. Um, you, you, but I think that in the end, you know, this is something that I've, you know, I've always loved. It's, it's in my blood. It's, it's something that I'm just so happy that I've gotten to this spot here with all of y'all. Coach, welcome to Denver, first of all. Appreciate uh, it. Vic Lombardi from Altitude Sports. Uh, okay. You display so much youthful exuberance. How important do you think that is to relate to 20-somethings who played this game? I think it's big. I mean, it's just, it's that, it's got to be that genuine, that genuine juice, that genuine energy. It's, it's got to be who you are. Uh, I mean, it's got to be, you know, just vibrate through the whole facility. Everybody's got to feel it. It's not just one person. You don't just save it up for your star player. It's got to be with anybody and everybody. Um, so I just think it's, uh, it's something that's so important. I mean, this, this whole generation, this whole world is changing. Um, I mean, I call it, you know, that YouTube generation world. And, um, you know, just meetings are different from when I first started on how, trying to keep people's attention and, and inspire them and get them excited. Um, so I think that as a coach, you just always have to have that 
excitement and energy to find different ways to approach them and, and get them all fired up to be able to learn and, and get better each day. Thank you very much, Coach. You can take a seat. Awesome. Just, uh, just kind of welcome up some questions from all the board. Thanks for coming. Mike, go ahead. Yes, yes, George. I'll, I'll start with the uh, elephant in the room. As soon as you hired Nathaniel, the speculation ran rampant about uh, package deal with Aaron Rodgers. Does Aaron Rodgers have anything to do with this hire? Now, before I answer that, uh, my family showed up late, and I believe this is the first time they've been in UC Health Center. So I want to introduce my wife, Barb, in the back, and, and uh, my beautiful daughter, Bella, and my handsome son, Bo. And so welcome to UC Health. I think this is the first time you guys have been hey, here. Uh, because of COVID, and, and Mike, absolutely not. <laughs> Good, thanks that, for asking. That, that was your answer? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, why did you think it was important, uh, as a follow-up, to go uh, to these places, to these different cities, and because it, it seemed exhausting just writing about it. That, yeah. Uh, you went and saw these people in person. Yeah, well, when we met as a committee and we talked about what we wanted to get out of the interviews, uh, we just felt it was, this is a huge decision, obviously. This will be the big, biggest decision I make in my career. It's a huge decision for the organization. And to depend on a Zoom call, you know, um, it just seemed, you know, it just seemed ridiculous to me. We wanted to go, we wanted to get to know these, uh, these candidates in person. You get a different feel when they walk into a room, the presence, the feel of the body language and so it, it was you know and I just applaud Joe Ellis and this organization for giving us the resources to do what we had to do and really it was for us it was a game changer and uh, I mean when when this guy walks in a room I mean you're not going to get that on zoom I guarantee it hey, Nathaniel Arnie Stapleton from Associated Press hello howdy I, I know that uh, George just said Aaron Rodgers had nothing to do with your hiring but I'm sure Aaron Rodgers had a lot to do with your getting ready to sit in that chair right now. So I have a two-part question. One is, what did working with Aaron do to, to make you a good head coaching candidate? And secondly, did he give you any words of support as you went through this process? Yeah, first and foremost, Aaron was absolutely unbelievable. Um, he's been one of my biggest supporters, and I love him. And I'm thankful very much for him. And um, coaching a man like that, um, the one thing I learned is you better have an answer for every question because he's going to ask every single question about every single thing that you're going to do. Um, so I think that was something that was very valuable for me when you're dealing with a guy that is, is that intelligent, is that if you want to do something, he's not, you're not going to be able to just put that up there and say, hey, you're doing this, uh, if, unless it's something that he might have already done in the past. But um, if it's something new, you've got to be sure to, to be able to have a great answer. So I think it's just allowed me to understand communicating and talking with everybody and knowing that you always have to have an answer why. Hey, Nathaniel, Brandon Christoph from KOA Radio. How are you doing? Kind of good. Kind of a, a two-parter related to you getting to run the show. When you called plays, designed plays in Buffalo and Jacksonville, there's stories out there about naming them after Star Wars characters or Justin Timberlake songs. So do you have a Rolodex of even crazier, more fun stuff now that no one's there to, to maybe check you on that? And then because you grew up in locker rooms and coaching for so long, how excited are you to be able to implement the things that you liked or ideas you had that maybe didn't necessarily get to take place at other places? Yeah, the sky's the limit on the words now. I mean, who knows what's going to happen. And it, it, but it's got to be a mutual thing. I mean, <clears throat> again, as a, as, a, as a coach, you deliver a system and, and you teach a system to the players. Uh, my favorite thing is when, this, when the players become the system and the players own the system and it's theirs. So I think as they develop uh, their own words, I'm always going to hope that they're Star Wars words or Justin Timberlake words. I don't know. Um, but those are the things that, that that's when they become and they own it and they become the system. So I think it's just about us all working together and getting those things. And uh, during that time, it just happened. Uh, we got to utilize a couple of those terms. And then um, to be able to be in this position, you know, there's been so many places and so many great people that I've learned from, like I had talked about earlier, I mean, that have developed the person that you see here. And I think for me, it's just all, throughout all those years, there's been so many good, so, um, so many, you know, some bad things. And you want to just take and learn from all those things. So when you have this opportunity, you hope that you've learned so much from your past that you can uh, be the best for this team, for the, for the Denver Broncos. I mean, that's, 
that's what it's going to be. So we're going we're gonna to do all kinds of fun stuff, hopefully, and, and it really starts with just winning ball games. George, you had talked about during this search that you wanted someone could lead, insp inspire, empower. We see the energy. What is it you see from Nathaniel in terms of the football side that makes you believe as a first-time head coach he's ready for this challenge? Because we see the energy, obviously, that he's going to caffeinate this. Yeah, you look at the full body of work, where he's been, whether it's in college at Syracuse, where he was an offensive coordinator. And, and uh, obviously, they weren't as good when he got there, and he, he took them to a bowl game. And then, and then, uh, then he's with the Buffalo Bills, right? And uh, he, he becomes a coordinator there. They finished 9-7 and seven his last year. And, and then Jacksonville, you know, a team that's struggling. And uh, he took that team to the A not him alone, but you know that offense to the AFC Championship game, and, and uh, what he did with Blake Bortles, and then you know what they're doing in Green Bay, and uh, you know we talked to everyone in Green Bay's building, and, and the impact he had on that building, not only uh, in terms of leadership, leadership, but in regards to scheme and and um, you know innovation, and uh, so and then when you talk to him about his vision, about our football team, about our offense, about our defense about our special teams. I mean, we could have sat there for five hours. I mean, he really, really blew us away uh, in that initial interview and it just carried on. And uh, you can sit in a room with him and, and talk football for hours. So I have no doubt of his football acumen and I, I think he has a brilliant football mind. Hey George, two long interviews in Green Bay and then here on Monday. Would you want to find out on Tuesday via Zoom that maybe clinch the deal? <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, we brought him here uh, that Monday, and he spent the whole day. And the least amount of time he spent with anyone was me, you know. And I'm like, wow. Okay. You know, it's just everyone wanted to meet him. He wanted to meet everyone. I really wanted to make sure he was comfortable in, the, in this organization, you know, with the people here. And, and uh, I, was, I was comfortable. But uh, I just felt he and I needed to have some more conversation. There's so many things involved through a coaching search when you're talking about staff and, and uh, I mean, the people in the building. And we never really, we had a one-on-one -on -one conversation on our initial interview for a half hour. But I mean, like I said, you know, we're very process oriented and I just felt I needed a lot of time with them one-on-one because -on -one, we're going to be living with each other. We're, we're partnered, we're tied at the hip. And, and it's, you know, it's him and I and our staffs and this building and the people, but it all starts here and, and uh, with our relationship. And, and I am so sold on that and him and our partnership, and, and I'm just excited to get going. Coach, welcome to Denver. Zach Stevens with the NBR. Thank you. Uh, we've talked about a couple of your passions beyond football already. When was it that you realized you, you wanted to go the football route, specifically the coaching route, and, and why was that? <clears throat> Whoa, the, uh, you know, when I uh, was doing, I, I, was, I was majoring in neurobiology, and I was in my final lab. And um, we, were, uh, we were doing all this crazy lab stuff. It was like a 10-hour lab. I was with uh, one of my friends uh, that we were in that, and I was, gonna, I was finishing up my major. And um, at the same time, I was also volunteering, working at UC Davis with Mark Johnson and coaching linebackers, well, assisting linebackers. And uh, you know, while I was there, I just remember being in that lab. And uh, you know, it, was, it was very quiet and very serious. <laughs> and uh, I might have tried to play a couple practical jokes, and I don't think a lot of people liked the jokes. I thought they were really good jokes. And, um, you know, then you, then you leave, you go outside, and you are out on the field, and you're with your, your brothers, you're with your, you know, your coach, and it, you just realize, especially how we did it there in, in, at UC Davis, it was just, it was so family-oriented, it was, it, it was very powerful. And I think that at that moment, I'm like, ah, I, I, I really need to try this thing. And uh, I was lucky because uh, somebody from Davis had gone to Stanford, Keith Buckley, and, and he reached out to me, and I was able to go there as a quality control guy and uh, was thrown into everything. So I didn't know if I necessarily wanted to do it, but was thrown in there, and it threw me in. I was coaching defense, special teams, offense, and now we're all here talking. So it's, uh, it's, it was a pretty unique moment, but I do remember that moment very specifically. George, was, was there any part of this decision that you look at the playoffs and you see a bunch of explosive offenses, you know what those offenses in this division can do and say, we need to get to that level? And then Nathaniel, to, to follow up on that, what do you think of the challenge of having to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes in this division? 
Yes, I think if I understand correctly, yeah, you watch the playoffs. Obviously, these offenses are dynamic, and, and obviously we have a long way to go in that capacity. We need we need to get better on offense, and we need to score a lot more points, and, and we need to be more explosive and, and more exciting for our, our great fans. And But we also need to be better on special teams, and we don't want to take a step back on defense. So, you know, I, of course, we watch these games, and it's it's fun to watch, and and uh, but we need to get better in all three phases. Yeah, I'd say, I mean, this division's, you know, arguably the best division in, in football. And I think it's, it's a great challenge for everybody. And uh, as a team, as a group, we're going to have to find a way to win. And, I mean, it's just that simple. As a team, together, believing in each other. And I think that is, that's the environment we're trying to create. And <coughs> we're going to find a way. That, that's what we got to do. And, you know, as soon as this is up and we get to start grinding and start figuring all that stuff out. Coach Rachel, 104.3 The Fan, what Rachel. is your phil or philosophical approach when it comes to developing a quarterback? And also, it, um, to go off of that, what are some characteristics that you really value the most at that position? So about the, so, so when you're developing a quarterback, I think, you know, all quarterbacks, they need to have success. You need to be sure that you're protecting them. And whenever you're dealing with a young quarterback, <laughs> you want to be sure, and, and even an older quarterback, you want to be sure you're always protecting them. You're protecting them and that you do that with both protection with the offensive line and running the football. So I think that's kind of the best way to be able to always make sure that they're having success and able to have, cl have clean pockets. Um, and then you just got to, ha it's about that, like a lot of people say the 10,000 uh, rep count, you know, it's about continually working, continually staying in. And I think that's why I'm so lucky to be here right now is because it's going to be a continuous offense, that the offense is going to be here for a long time. So you can bring somebody and develop them, and they can get the reps, get the understanding of one play. Because when you start calculating the analytical data on, a, uh, on one play, the different things that can happen in each one through all the different coverages, there's so, mu so many things that can happen in one play for a quarterback. So I think it's about always working with them, always teaching them, um, letting them get a comfort level so they can go out there and play and have that can't stop me mentality. That's what I always talk about that. That's what you want that quarterback to have when he gets out there. Um, and then what was the second question? I'm sorry, I just wanted to. Uh, characteristics that you value the most at that position? Um, qualities that I, I mean, I say toughness and intelligence. I mean, those are the two things. Yeah, I mean, that quarterback takes some massive hits and they gotta still get up, you know, and it's both mentally and, phys mentally and physically because you know, they have to talk and they have to answer for a lot of things. It's probably the hardest position, you know, one of the hardest positions in all of football. Um, so from that point, and then intelligence is, is so important to be able to do the different things you, you would like to do on offense. Uh, one for each of you. First for Nathaniel. Um, <coughs> practices, what are the things that you can do as a coach and you as a, and the whole staff to kind of increase the energy? Is it music? Is it tempo? What do you do to kind of Ramp that up. I mean, both of those are, are great things. I, I mean, I love practice. I mean, I absolutely love I mean, there's no substitute for guys going out there and playing football. I mean, there's just no substitute for it. I mean, again, there's the drills. There's, a, there's so many different things that you need to do to prepare yourself for practice for the game. But, I mean, I just think it's the best thing for those guys. And, uh, you know, when it comes to that energy, you know, of course, you know music's going to be out there. I mean, and it's going to be the guys' music because, I mean, that's – that's what it's about. It's about feeling, feeling that rhythm and, and having fun. And, um, but again, I think it's just it's the demeanor of the coaches. It's the demeanor of how we handle it. I mean, if somebody makes a big play, you want to be excited. You want to be excited for the defense, the offense, the special teams, for everybody. And um, that's kind of the atmosphere you want to create. So it's not about just going out there to practice. It's about going out there to compete and play football and have fun. And George, for you, will you be going down to Senior Bowl next week? Uh, that's the plan, definitely. What are you going to be kind of looking for when you watch the practices down there? Well, I mean, it's the first time I've probably seen a lot of these players live. And, and you just like to see how they compete against the best. You know, when you go to a, a regular college game, sometimes they stick out. They're not competing against the best. Uh, the Senior Bowl, you can really see them compete against the best, how they work, uh, how they grind, are they coachable. Uh, then you can interview them at night. And so it, it's a really ben beneficial. And so, you know, definitely planning to get down there. Uh, one for each of you. George, first, uh, what was your thinking when you decided, I'm not doing any more second interviews, I, I want to hire Nathaniel? You know, I spent a lot of time, as, as I said, with Nathaniel, and um, there was no reason to go on. I was sold. I mean, I was just sitting, you know, 
we, again, we wanted to go through the process. But there was a lot of great candidates. I mean, this was a, this is a really good group of candidates that, that we interviewed. Uh, I spent a lot of time with him, and it was I, I I knew how I felt. I talked to the staff, I talked to the leadership, and it was like, what are we doing? This this is the guy for the Denver Broncos, and so we just we pulled the cord. I mean, we we made the decision, and and uh, couldn't be more excited. And Nathaniel's, how will you begin to reach out to the players moving forward? I mean, it's, it's been great. Since I've been here, I've already talked to a couple guys. Um, I mean, for me, that's one of the first things you have to do is, is you have to talk to the staff that's here, and you got to reach <coughs> out to all the football players. I mean, they're the heartbeat of this thing, and uh, I want to get to know them all. I, I want to understand who they are. Um, this game's about relationships, and, you know, right when we're done here in the next couple days, it's about building those relationships.